Hi, this is Chelsea from Bubbly Pumpkin Studios, and we'll be painting this tonight. Alrighty, so the tools that you will need will be a surface to paint on. I'm using this wooden canvas, so if you're also using a wooden, cam uh, wooden surface to paint on, I would suggest to also have um, some type of sander just in case you need to sand it down to make it a little bit more smoother. Mine's not too bad, it's a little bit rough. I'm just gonna sand it just to be safe. For brushes, I'm using a one inch bristle brush. I think this is one inch. And a number five uh, detail brush. I like this one for just getting into the small details. For colors, you will need black, cobalt blue, bright red, yellow, and titanium white. And something to clean your brushes in. And a paper towel, or I'm using a really dirty uh, microfiber towel to clean my brushes off in. And that's it. We'll go ahead and get started. My first step is going to be to sand. We're going to go ahead and start with our sky. I'm going to be using my big brush, or biggest brush, and I'm going to start with my, I'm going to start with my red, because I'm making a um, kind of a sunset. I'm going to be mixing, whoops, some hair in there, I'm mixing some purple, I'm going to have a purple orangey sky, so I'm going to make sure that I start with my red, because red is the main color when you are painting, when you're making purple or orange, so it's better to start with your red first before, instead of starting with your blue or your yellow. So in that way you have um, less to have to clean up. So I'm just starting off the whole surface, making sure I don't have a lot of paint clumped up on my surface because it'll dry unevenly. If you want to have that a 3D effect, I forgot to mention I'm using acrylic paints. I apologize, I should have said that in the beginning. But you can use any type of medium for this. What's fun with acrylic paint is it will, if you set it, you put a thick coat on one spot, it'll actually dry as a mound, so if you wanted to have like a 3D effect, you could do that. Just starting off with my, just filling in this whole section, starting off with my whole palette. I'm not going to clean off my brush. I am going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and start making my orange first. 
because actually, let me see. Thinking about, actually, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna start with my orange first. I'm gonna make my orange. So we're gonna go ahead and start. I'm gonna start at the bottom. Work our way up. So I'm just going in little sections. grabbed red and yellow together. some purple kind of peeking through around the side here. Your brush is nice and clean. I would say clean off this brush. Make sure the surface is nice and clean before you move on to the next step. And I would say to make sure that you push your brush down to the very bottom of your cup or whatever you're cleaning it from to kind of get all of that pigment off. Really push it down in there. And if you're finding that the color isn't coming off, you can always take it to your sink and rinse it off that way. But I will see you back for the next step. Alrighty. Once your paint yellow is pretty dry, we can move on to the next step. It's okay if uh, you find a wet spot of your yellow uh, by accident and it's still pretty wet. You can just go ahead and I would say usually if I find a spot that's pretty wet, I usually end up stopping and just letting that dry before I move on. But you can always just fill it in with the color we're gonna use next. On my big brush, I picked up my blue and I'm going over parts of my red, not all of them. And I'm really light with my hand right now. I'm using since I'm using a wood surface, is pulling a lot of my paint. And I'm kind of pulling, I'm grabbing, sometimes I'm grabbing a lot of paint, sometimes I'm grabbing a little bit of paint. For this type of background, since we're trying to make a night, like a sunset, it's always a good idea to take a step back and add a little bit more red spots. That's the thing, if you're a little heavy-handed with the blue and it's turning in too much into blue and you're losing some of the purple, just go back in and grab some more purple, I mean some more, some more red and you'll get your purple color will come back. And I think I'm going to grab a tiny bit of white. Not too much, but I want to lighten it up a little bit. It's getting a little too light for me. See right there, I grabbed a little 
too much white. But that's okay. I can always go back in and lighten it up and darken it. Rather. Yeah, if it gets a little too, if it's getting, if your blue is getting a little too dark, you can always go back in with some. than I wanted to. I'm gonna grab, this time I'm going to grab a tiny bit of white, a lot of blue, and some red too. I'm going to bring back some of that purple. I'm trying to blend in that white. I don't want a white streak showing up there. And how I'm doing that is I'm taking some of my red on top of my blue. And I'm trying to make sure, just mixing my color on my palette for a second there. Just grab some blue, red, and a little bit of white again. Being careful, getting a little bit down into my yellow there, almost got a little bit of green showing, that's okay. I can always wait for that to dry and go back over. It's a nice thing with acrylic paint, you can always go back over and cover up some spots where you might have made a little, made a little too much. I'm just taking a minute to step back. whole section there. Just gonna add a little bit more red on this spot over here. And this part is up to you. It's the artist's choice. I'm just taking this, just took a step back to kind of lean back a little bit to see. I'm gonna add a little bit more in. I think I'm just about done with the sky. I'm just taking a little bit of time to kind of go back in and maybe add in a darker orange to kind of let this kind of ease into each other a little bit because it's so I would like it to be a little bit ease into each other. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna take I haven't cleaned off my brush yet. I was going to then I decided no. I'm just gonna take this a little bit. I do have a little bit of green that's okay. I can always go back in. So I'm just going to go ahead and try to cover that up a little bit to help balance that out a little bit. You've hit some unexpected yellow spots. You can always go in with your, when you started making green, you always go in back in with your red. brush. I cleaned off all of the blue. That's why I can always go back in with my yellow. Are done with that brush for now. I want to make sure to clean it off really good. 
box the next time we will use it will be after we use our small brush. So I would say clean off your big brush, put it aside, and get your small brush ready for the next step. My apologies. We were going to move on to our next step with the black, but I wanted to add letting this dry. I wanted to add a little bit more. I wanted to kind of darken it and lighten it in certain spots. My lighter spot down at the bottom started to get. I started to lose my uh, yellow, so I'm just now I'm taking my uh, red and I am darkening it over here. It's starting to get a little. You'll find as you work with acrylic that it will darken as it dries, but this one I was losing. I wanted to have a little bit more red showing through than I was getting. We're in a really deep type of sunset here. So I'm just using my basically almost the last of my yellow, which is okay because our next, after we get happy with our sunset, then all we will need is our black, I promise. My apologies. <laughs> I sit here and I like painting sunsets, so do this. Kind of get distracted. I can keep doing this. Oops. If you get a little chunk of this just dried uh, acrylic paint, you can just scrape it off with your brush. Alright, now I promise that we are done. You can put your cup, your brush in your cup, and then let this completely dry because of this, we want this dry because our next step will we will be putting in our Joshua trees in our black with our small brush to start to block it out and then we'll be using our big brush to add in the details. So we want to make sure that the big brush is nice and clean. We want to make sure that our surface that we're painting on is also nice and dry. Okay, I will see you in the next step. Alrighty. Now, I'm going to be using my small brush and I'm going to move this a little bit closer so you'll be able to see. I'm going to be doing some details. Lights, to see. There we go. Alright, so I'm going to be painting Joshua trees. And I have one big one here in the center. And I'm going to have it go about, maybe, I'm going to have it stop a little bit before halfway because I want it to kind of um, spread out this direction. I don't have enough space able to see it all. I'm going to start with my small brush because that gives me a little bit more control. If you want to use your big brush, by all means, you can go ahead and just skip this step and go straight into your big brush. I just like using my small brush so I can be able to figure out where everything's going to go first before I add in everything else. So I'm going to start with my big one. I'm going to roughly decide where I want my middle to be. I'm just going to guesstimate here. A, a dot, and make a line all the way down to the bottom. And it's okay if it's not straight. I'm going to be thickening this up after I get my basic structure down. trees in. So here where I stopped it, where I started my line, is where I'm going to have my tree, my branches come out. So I'm going to start them as little Y's, a little bit off to the side on either end, making it, usually Joshua trees are kind of have a little U shape. This one a little bit of a U shape. The less structure your tree is, the better. The less, uh, you know, right angles that you have, the better. So I just made this one little 
branch. I'm gonna make this other one over here. I'm gonna be thickening these up after I get them in. Just getting my basic shape down. This one is going to branch off into another cir half circle. Other trees. Just holding my, I find if I hold my, my painting hand with my non-painting hand, I don't know why, but it helps control my, uh, the smooth motion. So I've got a little hole here, so I'm gonna have it just stop. Go into the hole and then come back out. Do another one over here. A little bit of a wider half circle over here. too worried about this staying nice and straight lines. If anything, it's good to have a little bit of a wiggle. Let your wrist naturally wiggle every once in a while when you're shake a little bit. While you're painting, you're putting these branches down because it kind of helps you in the long run. Alright, before I finish stick up this guy, I'm going to add, I have another tree back here. He's further back, so I'm going to have him, I won't have to thick, I won't be thickening him up because he's in the background. This one, I'm going to, since he's a lot smaller, I'm going to try to have, I'm going to add a little curve, I'm have him like he's facing a little bit away from us, and his branch on this side. Everywhere that we have we make our little stubs, we have to add in our little um, little the tops of the Joshua trees because they have a little bit of a spiky little things on the top of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and do this one here, just with my small brush and just kind of dotting. I'm just gonna do a little, actually not really dotting. I'm just gonna do little tiny swipes with my brush. swipes with my brush and that gave the idea of little spikes. So I'm do this other one over here. I've got one more over here. I just want to get, get these in so I know how thick I should make this tree in front. So I've got this tree a little bit closer. I'm going to make this one just thicken up this one a little bit with my small brush. Side. 
pieces. This one's further back. I'm gonna make sure that it's branching off sooner than the one in front. That will help show that it, that will help sell to the person viewing your painting that this one's further back. as if I'm making a little spiky oval around the ends of my branch. Or you can do a little spiky ball through your branch. Just kind of let your wrist kind of flick a little bit, just slightly. You could add more in the background if you want to. to add too many because they usually aren't too the closer you have them together the further they are the further are they are from you it's gonna be a little bit of a challenge to add all the extra details if you want to go for it Those are drying before I can add in my bottom section here. I'm going to go ahead and clean off my small brush for a second here. I'm going to go in with my large brush in the black. Make sure I don't have any extra water in my brush. And I'm going to just follow this line that I made before. this thicker, but I don't want to make it too thick. I have to thicken up the rest of my sections with it. These branches on the sides. This guy. And I'm just tracing over the line I just made. And normally, with a little loose, I don't know if you can see, there's a little loose um, brush hairs here. When I was painting another type of tree, I would be careful not to let those kind of add to the painting. But with the Joshua tree, there's such little, they've got little spikes on them that it actually can add to the Joshua tree, add to the character. Okay, with a couple of those little loose hairs there. I think since I still have, actually no, I was gonna do, well I do have a little bit on my brush. I'm gonna go ahead and do this bottom section real quick. So for the bottom section, I'm gonna do this little, I'm just gonna take my brush and I'm just pressing down just a little bit. thing kind of gives adds a little character to the bottom of my hand and get down there. How to put the spots. Set it back down. And I'll put my brush. branches where I feel like I need to. And this is all about, this is up to you at this point. You can, if you feel like you want to add some more, if you feel like you're almost done. sell that this is in the front. I can add a couple little, take my brush, 
should just add a couple little hairs. Joshua trees remind her of those uh, Lorax trees and Trefula trees. Little tufts. Always taking a step back to see if I need to add any extra. Most of the time I have to take a step back to make sure that I'm not overdoing it. So I just went ahead and clean off my big brush, I mean my small brush. I'm going to go move back to my big brush to add the little tufts. So for this one, I'm going to do the same thing I did back here on the back of the trees, but I'm doing it with my big brush. So I'm using my big brush, I'm starting in the middle and just kind of letting it just swipe around the outside. Oh, actually, let me move it closer so you can see. I just realized you kind of have a hard time seeing that. brush starting in the center of my branch and I'm just swiping. I'm just going around in a little oval. And I get that little little truffula little spikies. Just taking my big brush, dipping it in my black and then just going around in an oval. shorter branch. Too much on my brush that time. You don't need a lot of paint on your brush, just enough that it'll show up. We're near the end, so it's alright. If you have extra paint on your canvas, that's fine. Just let it dry. If anything, can I add an extra little bit of texture, which might be a neat thing to do? I actually have a spiky Joshua tree. And then once you are done with the spikies on your truffula tree, mint, <laughs> not your truffula tree, your Joshua tree, we are going to be moving. You can clean off your big brush and you get your small brush ready for the last step. All right. So the last step, we are going to sign it. I'm going to use, I think, I'm going to use my, I'm going to use black. You use whatever, any other, can't talk. <laughs> Use any color that you like. I'm going to take my small brush and I'm going to sign it. You can sign it left or right. I think I'm going to sign mine on the uh, right. I've gotten so used to signing it on the right. But you can sign it, you can date it, whatever you want to put in there. We try to hide it in the background. But that is it. 